three crazy amigos with three different kinds of riding bikes. <laughs> Could That's, find three more different bikes. We have the, the medley of a bicycle touring. We got Bill's trailer, this thing, I don't know what you call it. It's the thing. And my, you guys know my bike. <laughs> <laughs> During the next five days, Bill, Jason, and I will be riding a loop around a section of Wyoming's Bighorn National Forest, starting from the city of Sheridan and passing through the towns of Ranchester, Dayton, Graybull, Tensleep, and Buffalo, and ending back in Sheridan. We will be covering over 250 miles and climbing over 15,000 feet of elevation. Ranchester, Wyoming. Ranchester, Ranchester Wyoming, and right here, is the there that's where we're heading let's go i'll follow you guys i'm Please. trying to keep up i'm trying to keep up but we're at the mouth of the river and we're about to like start paddling upstream where are we the first of two mountain passes we will climb highway 14 east starts at 4021 feet just outside of the town of Dayton in High Prairie and peaks at forested Cutler Hill at 8347 feet to reach the peak it will take a total gain of 4326 feet in 16.2 miles at an average gradient of 5% unlike myself both Bill and Jason have climbed such passes in the past so I had reason to feel a bit intimidated and at the same time static at this new challenge ahead of me. Just rode 30 miles from Sheridan to start climbing the Bighorn National Forest Route 14. We're gonna do four to five days depending on the weather. We're supposed to get snow after tomorrow and uh, 15,000 feet of climbing 250 miles <laughs> we'll see how that goes Woo! it's gonna be the biggest challenge of my trip so far established in 1897 being one of the oldest government protected forest lands in the United States and with its diverse landscape of glacial valleys clear lakes rolling hills alpine meadows and grasslands, North Central Wyoming's Bighorn Mountains offer one of the most scenic experiences the nation has to offer. They are located between the Powder River and Bighorn Basins and offer visitors a wide range of recreational activities such as cycling, climbing, hiking, fishing, hunting, horseback riding and camping. Its highest peak, Cloud Peak, rises to 13,171 feet in elevation where Cloud Peak Glacier, the last active glacier in the Bighorn Mountains, is located. These mountains are also home to moose, elk, pronghorn, black bear, mountain lions, bald and golden eagles, and merlins, to name a few. I'm climbing! Woo! Awesome! Insane! I don't know that I've ever had this much fun in my life, and I have no idea why. But climbing is a ball, just grinding. And it's awesome. There's gotta be some psychological problem with people like me. Cause I have no idea why going this low up a stupid mountain is a ton of fun. <laughs> Insane. I'm just going like three and a half miles an hour to 4.7 miles an hour. Just the best I can just to keep moving and the only reason why I stopped is because of the sign. I wanted to get myself in a Bighorn National Forest sign. But uh, the steepest part of it is coming up. And I'm only halfway up to the first big peak. So let's go. There's Jason over there! 
She's been sitting there for 30 minutes. Awesomeness. That was amazing. I love climbing. Why do we like climbing so much? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that was amazing. We just uh, climbed 3,600 feet or so, and we're feeling lightheaded. I am, and Jason feels lightheaded too from the altitude. So we're gonna take it easy and try to read our bodies and keep climbing. It's, it's, it's a punishing climb, man. I mean, nothing easy about this. It wouldn't even be easy on just a regular old road bike with no, no bags. Yeah. Well, and I don't even know if we're close to the summit. Uh, that guy said no. He said you got some climbing ahead of you. As we make our way up the mountain pass, we start feeling altitude sickness. This is due to the rapid exposure of low amounts of oxygen present at higher elevation. Our symptoms are tiredness, confusion, and dizziness. Altitude sickness typically occurs when one reaches 8,000 feet in elevation. The elevation's definitely getting to me. I'm lightheaded, even though I'm taking plenty of water and electrolytes and sugar in the form of bars it's a challenge the cold front's coming through and uh it's blowing 30. we still got 2,000 feet to climb I think that's it. I think uh, we, we're at the top. Finally some flat ground. Unreal. I'm so happy right now and tired. Ridiculous. That was the most challenging ordeal on a bicycle I've ever done and probably the most memorable, happiest time I've ever had on a bicycle. <laughs> it's torture. But the best part is to come, which is taking back all this climbing and dropping. Can't wait. <laughs> Woo! It's downhill from now. Not really, but mostly. And we're pooped. There's not one of us that's like, I could have done that twice. I'm super psyched that my buddies came with me, Bill and Jace. We crushed this mountain. I'm ready to do higher, bigger, and steeper. It's a chilly 43 degrees and uh, we're eager to get out there and climb 2,500 feet to Grave Wool. And uh, Bill's kind enough to be making us coffee. It's okay with us drink coffee, so he's screwed. It was a cold tea. night. <laughs> he's making us bullet coffee. He brought the butter and the collagen and the... The blender. Swing the leg over the bike. Oh. We're 
We're gonna drop 4,600 feet in 18 miles. We're about to start a 4,800 foot descent for 18 miles towards Grable. Descending on a bicycle is without any doubt one of the greatest rewards of cycling. There is an inherent degree of fear that gets battled and beaten by the sheer sense of euphoria that comes from going as fast as possible and leaning around every turn on the road. I have learned many techniques during the 2,500 miles I have ridden so far this summer. One of the most important ones, after making sure that your tires and gear are in good shape, is always looking ahead for any obstacles on the road as even a dip in the pavement or a small rock can turn into serious trouble. When I see cars coming my way, I tend to slow down enough to feel safer in case of falling until they pass by. Then I accelerate once again. As I approach a turn, I tend to slow down enough to be able to pick up speed as I ride around the turn. Once I pick up so much speed on my highest gear that it becomes difficult to keep up with my cadence, I tuck my body low with my chin over the handlebars and place most of my weight on the pedals, lifting my butt off the saddle while bringing my body forwards until I feel my weight distributed evenly on both wheels. To better achieve this, I avoid leaning my body weight onto the handlebars while gripping them firmly on the drop position always in reach of my brake levers. Lastly, I focus on steady breathing. The views, the scenery, the dropping. Woo! That's how I feel right now. We just uh, descended for 17 minutes, non-stop, just unbelievable. Lots of good. 35 miles an hour. 35? 